Hi, good morning and welcome back to the Kristen Amdahl Show. This is episode 968 and we're here live in Southwest Florida Beach. If you are joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you are crafting today. Let me know if you have questions for me or just say hi. And I will wait a few minutes before beginning because uh, it does take a little while for people to pop over from pre-chat and notifications. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Julie. Good morning. Hi, Lily. If you are new here, uh, this is a live stream show that I do five days a week, usually at the beach. We do Monday evening for sunset here at the beach and the rest of the week we do 9 a.m. Hi, Helen and Kathy, Angela. Karen, Grace, Judy, Karen, Angela, good morning, Grace and Lily, Carrie, good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Hopefully you're having a great day so far. And I'll, to continue on for those that you that might be new here, if you come early to the show, you, you can join the pre-chat for 30 minutes prior to the show going live with me. And if you would like to continue the party throughout the day, we now have the 100% private KO community forums on my website, so you can check that out. And you have, if you haven't already introduced yourself, head over to the introduction topic to begin with. Introduce yourself, and I've written a post there to start with, giving you a coupon code to use on my website just for thanking you for joining the KO community forums. If you have questions about that, there is a blog post sharing a lot of the facts, and there are there is also a topic sharing the rules, the facts, FAQ, meaning frequently asked questions, and explaining that it's 100% private. Uh, also, there are some rules, uh, just like with anything else, but they're pretty much common sense. Just behave and be nice, you know. Uh, hi, Donna, good morning. Hi, Judy. Great, Karen, I'm glad you're enjoying making the Althea shawl. That's wonderful. That's one of my top-down knit shawl patterns done in number five bulky weight yarn. I did it in my Be So Easy yarn, which is so squishy and soft. Today we're gonna talk about the Sweet Clara top, and I'm wearing one of the versions right now. Hi Val, good morning. Hi Marsha, it's not hot here today, but it is over 90% humidity and it just it feels strange. Hi Marla and Barbara. So glad I found some waters in my bag this morning because the uh, it's so steamy here, it just uh, makes me thirsty. Hi Marsha. Ah, yay! Donna fought, watched an episode of Knit and Crochet Now with me on it last night. That's great! Yay! Yes, Knit and Crochet Now Season 12 is airing on PBS and Create TV throughout the country. You might want to check and see if it's uh, being aired in your area. You can, there is some information on it on a blog post on my website. Also, you can go to Knit and Crochet Now's website or just contact your local PBS station or Create TV and pop in your zip code and see if it's airing in your area. If it is not, you still have the opportunity to purchase and download each episode from Knit and Crochet Now's website, or you can order the whole season, or you can even order a box set of the entire season. And when you order it through the website um, from the producer of Knit and Crochet Now, Annie's catalog, you also get, uh, I think you also get the patterns as well. And I have forgotten to look and see if it's uh, airing, when it's airing in my area. I know it's supposed to be. Uh, and I promised that we would do a uh, live viewing party at my house, but I forgot to look it up. I've been so busy working on book 11, or not book 11, book 21. <laughs> Karen, have I lost more weight? Um, I'm not sure. I weighed myself this morning and uh, I'm back down. I'm just at my lowest weight that I've been in a couple of years. So I'm 178, which is the lowest I've been in a long time, which means good news is since I've been losing weight, I haven't gained any more back. Uh, but I think I've plateaued there. Um, still eating mostly vegan and still doing yoga and exercise when I can, but we'll see. 
yeah, I feel good. I feel healthy. Uh, I've been sleeping. I've been so tired lately. Last night, I fell asleep at 8 p.m. That's so not like me. But I had prior to yesterday, I think I've worked way too many 18-hour days in the last couple of weeks trying to get book 21 finished and ready for editing. And uh, I've worked way too much to the tune of hurting my forearm and my hand and my elbow. So some sort of uh, overworked business going on in there. So I'm almost done. I'm on my last set of swatches for the reference section of the book, my last set of actually typing content for the manuscript. So I will be ready for photography and editing soon and those will take uh, those will give me a lot of rest for my arms so I just need to push through with one more <laughs> I know not not the smartest thing to say uh, so I think that's why I'm extra tired lately anyway I um, uh, do I add protein powder to smoothies? No, I do not, Karen. For the most part, I eat whole foods. I do not eat processed foods, so I am avoiding protein powders as well since they are processed. And as far as uh, protein goes, the green leafy vegetables are higher in protein content than even steak. So I eat a, I eat a lot of kale and spinach in my smoothies and in my uh, actual foods or my eat, the foods that I eat. So I'm not worried about my protein content at all. I eat high protein and nutrient dense foods. Anyway, we can talk about that another day as well. Hi Thea, hi Martina, good morning. Yes, I'm wearing the Sweet Clara top. That's the pattern that I wanted to talk to you about today. Got lots to share with you. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have every single version that I've ever made of this. This is definitely the pattern I've made the most versions of. This is the sleeveless version done in Biso Sporty yarn. And I've also done a long sleeve version in Be So Sporty yarn. I've also done a dress in Be So Sporty yarn. And I've done a short sleeve version in Be So Luxe yarn. And I've also done a cardigan and a vest version as well, which I did not, I didn't, I've, these are the only pieces that I still own. Everything else I've given away or sold in sample sales. But this is the dress version. This is the short sleeve version. And this is the cap sleeve version. And there is a long sleeve version. The pattern for the Sweet Clara top comes with tons of sizes. It's a top down construction and it's worked in the round whether you're adding the sleeves or not, or adding the sleeves at any length or not. And because it has an A-line shape to it, it's something that looks really great, belted and bloused up like this, or it can be worn long and A-line, like a tunic like this, which looks super cute over fitted pants and a fitted silhouette underneath. And because it is so A-line already, it lends itself to be perfect for making it into a dress without even having to add shaping. So this is different than the garment that I showed yesterday because it already has the, the generous um, A-line shaping at the bottom. I was able to make the dress without actually adding any shaping. And I can try that on today as well. And I also brought the short sleeve version in Be So Luxe yarn to show that when you add the sleeves, you just pick up and work in the round, just like you picked up and worked in the round for the body. Then the difference is that I added a double crochet band to the neckline and I added it to the sleeve cuff and I added it to the body. Uh, all of the, these versions are in the same pattern, yes. Not the cardigan vest version, and the reason being is because this one is all worked in the round, and the other version is all worked in rows, and that is a completely different concept. Uh, and it, working a stitch pattern in rows and rounds is completely different. They're, when working in rounds, it's an even multiple and working in rows it's a multiple plus extra stitches so to write the pattern is completely different and so the cardigan and vest version which i don't own the samples for anymore i'll make another one in uh, maybe in be so lux or be so sporty i'm not sure 
Um, those version, I would like a long sleeve cardigan or maybe even, I know the vest was very nice. I think I wore the vest. What is, which one did I ended up wearing? I know, I didn't really wear either of them. Um, anyway, so I'm trying to figure out which one I would wear more and that's the one I'll probably make. Anyway, does anybody have any, that's a great question though, because when something is worked in rows and rounds, it ends up being completely different type of construction and therefore it is a completely different pattern. Having said that though, this pattern, oh, is this all in the same pattern? No, the dress is a separate pattern on its own, uh, but they, but you could do it, it you could do it uh, with or without the pattern and you would only need one of the patterns, whether you did the top or the dress, it ends up being uh, similar. Uh, yeah, if you like longer sleeves, then definitely make sleeves. And that's why I try to add sleeve instructions to most of my patterns whenever I can, because I know that everybody has different needs in their garments. And if people ask questions, I'm, so here's, so I'll go back again and show you how to belt this. Okay, so that's how it looks belted and which I think is so pretty because you get that peplum lower edge and you get that blouse shape. I just think this is so, so cute on. Now I am wearing this over leggings today because I was trying to get, uh, I was really trying to get one under layer for all of these tops and dresses and it didn't really work. Jeans I thought looked better with this top and with the black Be So Luxe version of the Be So Sporty top. But in order to try on the dress for you, I had to have on leggings or no pants, <laughs> like a dress, and it didn't work for both. So first I'll try on the Be So Luxe version so you can see, uh, yes, I have lots of stretchy belts in my Amazon store. In fact, I have one of those with me this morning. It's warm here. It's also over 90% humidity today, so it's very steamy. It's not, it's not like hot, hot, but okay. So here is that. Now you're not gonna see this one as much because I wore the black underlayer. I would have worn white jeans or denim jeans or something else so that you could see the texture better, but I'm hoping in the bright sunlight, you can see it still. Isn't that cute with short sleeves? And I think from seeing the short sleeves, you can also see how nice this would look with long sleeves too. I did short sleeves, you could do three quarter sleeves or long sleeves. There's no shaping in the sleeves, so just make them as long as you want. And notice how it has a little more coverage at the neck, and that's because of the couple of rows of double crochet I added to the ed to the top. So this top begins with foundation ovals, and I really liked this as an open wide neckline on my original version. But it, you know, there's there's is this a lace pattern? Yes, of course, yes. But uh, I also think that there's a reason to make something more than once so that you can add different elements to it. Uh, I just wish that I was wearing regular pants to show you the full beauty of this version. I also wanted to point out that uh, this shows you also that substituting same weight yarn with different yarns works. So for this version, I did this in Be So Lux yarn. In the raspberry version, I did it in Be So Sporty yarn. They're both number two sport weight yarns. Be So Sporty is 100% bamboo, and Be So Lux is 70% bamboo, 30% cotton. And as you can see, I've got a really, really great look out of this one as well. Yeah, and I did that, those slight modifications to show you that you, can, you still have options, even when making a pattern in the same size. You can make a tighter neckline. You could make a cowl neck. You could make a turtleneck on here. You could change the length of the sleeves. You could change the length of the hem also. I believe I made this one slightly shorter just because I wanted to. It's a top-down construction. You have that option. So now let's try on the dress. And just a quick reminder, if you're wanting to substitute Be So Sporty or Be So uh, Lux yarn, both number two sport weight yarns, uh, one of them is a bigger yardage than the other. 
BSO Sporty is 325 yards and BSO Lux is about half of that, so you would need twice as many balls. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Did you see Dolores Garden? I did. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. In fact, I'm going, are we at the right number today? Aren't, are we at number five? five yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to tell um, my audience about it today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. All right. I've got a great story to tell you about the guy that I just spoke to and I'm excited to share with you. Just, let's finish talking about Sweet Clara dress first. So some of the differences on the dress are that I added this really beautiful edging to the bottom. Now what I like about the dress is that it looks beautiful like this. It looks beautiful bloused up just like the top and it looks great with a jacket or like a jean jacket or a blazer over the top or even a cardigan over the top too. Or you know those cardigans that I like to wear where they tie in the front? This is a great layering piece. So even if you don't want to wear the dress exactly like this, and you want to wear another layer over the top, I've worn it with a blazer, I've worn it with a cardigan, I've worn it with my jean jacket. In fact, when I was photographed, professionally photographed for a magazine article about women in business, I wore this with a monochromatic slip underneath and a jean jacket at the beach and it looks so 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 pretty but i also like it belted like that i think that that's really interesting as well i think you could definitely wear it with leggings but i prefer a you know a dress slip a skirt slip underneath all right which one do we put back on i guess i could have left the dress on I'll show you again how to how to belt and blouse this because I think it's really interesting the way you can belt and blouse this up. Super easy. Any stretchy belt, although you can use it with a regular belt too. It doesn't have to be stretchy. And if you have extra yarn, you could make a belt too. I've shown lots of different ways to make belts over the years, including just with foundation ovals or foundation stitches. But isn't that flattering? <laughs> You know, it actually looks like a more complicated construction once you belt something like that, too. Okay, I've been busy, so I can't read all the comments when I'm busy like that. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I showed you this morning? You notice how the neckline came up more on this version because of that double crochet. See that? Yes, that dress is what I like to wear underneath this one. Did you know that slips are not easy to find? And to get a tank top slim fitted bodycon dress is way cheaper than a than a slip that's one of the reasons why i end up buying those dresses on amazon judy just posted a link to them they come in a ton of colors so that's the other thing if you're going to wear a lace dress you have so many options for how you want to style it and that's the case with the top too do you want to go with monochromatic and do the same color underneath i feel like you see the texture of the stitch pattern really nicely without seeing uh, anything else. I think it's very interesting and I, um, I have photos in all the different ways on my website too. But also high contrast. So you, like I showed today, you could do it with black underneath. You could do white underneath. You could do a pop of color. I've worn this with a turquoise dress underneath. I've worn it with a coral dress underneath. Uh, and depending on what color yarn you make it in, then you have all those other options. So let's say you went with a warm autumn color you could pick other contrast warm colors to go underneath or if you like cool summery colors then you would pick another cool summery color to go underneath or you can go with neutrals i think a black version of this would look amazing with both a nude underlayer and with a black underlayer i think going with um dark colors all dark colors look pretty with a nude underlayer and with a monochromatic underlayer definitely a little on the sexier side if you go with a nude underlayer but hey depends on where you're going if you're going on a hot sexy date that might be perfect <laughs> not that i know anything about that <laughs> i can but a girl can dream all right does anybody have any questions Thank you, Kimberly. I think these are so pretty. It's pretty as a top. It's pretty as a tunic. It's pretty as a belted up blouse, blouse on top. It's pretty with sleeves. It's pretty without sleeves. It's pretty with a neckline, without the neckline. And it's definitely pretty as a dress too. Now I made the dress long. What if you made it shorter? It doesn't have to be that long either. This is a top down construction. So again, the options are limitless. There's so many different ways you can do this. 
And if that's not enough, <laughs> you ready? You could also make anything else in the round. Once you have that chart showing you how to do a stitch pattern in the round, uh, no, no man news. I'm saying a girl can dream, that's all. So in this pattern, there's chart and written instruction for working even in the round. There's information for working increase in the round for the yoke, but then working even in the round for the body. So what can you make with that? All kinds of things, right? You can make a bag, you can make a cowl, you can make a hat. There's so many different ways to do that. Yes, exactly, but wait, there's more. Too bad that uh, that phrase wasn't trademarked, but it's trademarked by one of my favorite people in the world, Ron Pope, how do you say his last name? Oh my gosh, Ron Popeil, the, the father of infomercials. And I gotta tell you, I love infomercials and I certainly loved him. I loved the way he used to say that, loved it so much. And uh, thank you, Kimberly. Oh yes, the guy, the guy that was here, yes. He came up to me the other day after the show and he goes, oh, aren't you the person that used to do a show on Vanderbilt Beach? I said, yes, I used to uh, go to Vanderbilt Beach, but I struggled finding parking some days. And uh, the day, it, eventually I found this beach, Wiggins Pass, and I fell in love with how rustic and natural and amazing it is and especially the driftwood forest. And he goes, I know this is a special place. He goes, every time I come here though, I go to this little garden area to read the story of how Del Norwegans Pass Beach began. And if you'd like, we can go walk over there and I'll take you to the garden. It's like a little veranda garden. Let me pack up my bag. And once he told me about it, I uh, went over there immediately and I promised him and I promised myself that I would take you guys there too because it's an interesting story. Uh, so this property was named after a woman, Della Rose Norris. And uh, we'll talk more about it as we're headed over there. But I think, it's, I think it'll be fun to show you the spot that he shared with me. So we are at parking area five today, but we're at the south end of it, which is not that big of a deal. We'll just walk over there. All right, so. All right, so this is me holding the camera on the tripod. Hopefully it's not too shaky. But let's walk our way over there. So at the very north end of Del Norwegans Pass Beach. Oh, Judy sharing the park history. Thank you, Judy. I'm sure a lot of you will enjoy being able to read about it as well. Those of us that love history and love nature love every opportunity to learn more about it, right? Hi, Rebecca. So we're headed, we're headed north further towards the tip of Wigan, Delnor Wiggins Pass State Park. I mean, I know we, I do call it Wiggins Pass a lot. I shorten it like a lot of people do, but the full name is Delnor Wiggins Pass. And it is because of this woman named, I believe, Della Rose Norris. She is the reason it's called Delnor. And let's get to her little garden area so I can show you why this park is dedicated to her. Uh, going back to what we were talking about though, while on our way there. So working this stitch pattern in the round, like let's say you wanted to do it in Biso, in Biso, uh, and you could make a gorgeous uh, market bag out of it. Let's say you wanted to work in the round and make a hat or a cowl. You could do that in anything from Be So Easy yarn for a super quick, chunky one. Oh, so pretty. Yeah, no thank you, I'm not walking that way. <laughs> All right, I believe we're getting close. So see how the beach is underwater right here? 
depends on the tide. It's high tide right now. On low tide, you can actually walk all of this way along the beach. But in high tide, no. So pretty still though, isn't it? We've done lots of... Oh, you'll, you'll see what I'm saying when we get to the driftwood forest up here. You can see that a lot of it's underwater this morning too. Okay, we're gonna get there. Yeah, see? See how that area is underwater? Normally I'm sitting in that area and it's underwater today. This might even be a super high tide because that's more underwater than I normally see it. All right, let's go down real quick because it's still so magnificent to look at. Oh, look at all the birds on top of the trees. Ah, they're busy, busy doing something. Oh, excuse me. No, you're good, you're good. Okay. These are the areas that get scary at night. If I stay past sunset into twilight, coming into this area, it is so dark that even with a little flashlight, it's still like dark. <laughs> of course, someone like me worries that all the critters are gonna hop out at me. They don't though. Okay, so right now we're at the beginning of the north end of parking area five. And then there, here's this little gazebo called Dolores Garden. And there's my friend, what's your name? Hi Dave, Hi Dave. I'm Kristen, it's nice yeah, to meet you. Good to see you. Good to <laughs> you're on camera, is that okay? That's fine. All right. I hope to see you again next year, you're doing a fantastic oh, job. Oh, thank you so much. You're getting close to a thousand. Yes, what's yeah. What's the number? Um, 968. <laughs> God bless you, God bless you. Okay. you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so there's Dave. That's the guy that introduced me to this area of the park. And so there's a little bench and a little garden. And here's the plaque. And in case you can't read it, I will read it out loud. In grateful appreciation to Lester J. and Delora A. Norris. Okay, I said her name incorrectly. I apologize about that. Acquisition of this park was made possible when Lester J. and Delora A. Norris arranged the purchase of the land on April 24th, 1964 through their St. Charles, Illinois charities. The Board of County Commissioners of Collier County, that's the county we're in right now, named the park Delnor Park as a tribute to Delora A. Norris until the state purchased it from the county in 1970 and renamed it Delnor Wiggins Pass State Recreation Area. The Norrises also helped make possible the construction of facilities in this park through their generous contribution of funds. 1980, Department of Natural Resources, Division of Recreation and Parks. So that means this lady owned this or she and her husband owned it. That's, that's a little overwhelming to me. That's a lot of property. That's a lot of property. And it also reminds me, you can't take it when you leave. You know, I always remind Marlon and anybody who talks to me regularly, we're only promised the day we wake up, right? We're only promised today. We only have today to make the most of everything. If we're, pro if we're given tomorrow too, it's a blessing, right? And uh, I can't take anything with you. So anything you can share with others is amazing. Uh, and I really appreciate the fact that she shared this with the world. I mean, it brings me to tears almost every day that I come here and because of the, the beauty. And I think that she's just amazing for doing that. And having the forethought to think that, what a generous, generous, kind spirit. She's helped all the animals that thrive here. She's brought so much joy to so many people's lives by creating this park. So I just, I thought it was worth giving a shout out because she could have very easily kept it in her family and built a big mansion here, you know, or, or built a community here. There's so many things she could have done with it before she passed. And uh, the fact that she did that, just amazing. 
Isn't that lovely? So anyway, oh, we're now in the parking lot. <laughs> Not so exciting, I know. But thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day with me. I hope you enjoyed all my sweet Clara talk and the view, the scenery, the birds, the beach. Uh, chatting with me and everyone else here. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. And if you would like to continue the party, head on over to the KO Community Forums on my website. It's 100% private and you can chat with anybody and everyone there throughout the day as well. I will see you tomorrow for the next episode of the Kristen Omdahl Show. Bye everybody. Have a great day.